There are times in your life when you need to use a combination of different hardware with software, apps, hacks, tweets, to get something technical to work when it's not meant to, or even designed to do so. I was asked to install the Xfinity app from Comcast onto my Amazon Fire TV stick. The problem is Xfinity doesn't want you to able to use their app on an Android TV box. Even though you find the app on the Google Play Store or even the Amazon Store, Comcast only allows their app to work on devices that have touchscreen like mobile and tablets. I'm Dave from AskUncleDave.com and today I'm going to show you what I came up with. It's the third day of 2017 and I have the latest firmware on my uh, Fire TV stick here and I plugged it into my HDMI on my TV and I started it up. I signed in to my Amazon account and I'm ready to go. All the uh, firmware is updated and ready. Now, this video is not just for the Xfinity app. This is also to show you how to sideload apps onto an Android device. A lot of people are calling it jailbreaking, but it's not jailbreaking. It's sideloading. When you jailbreak something, you get root access to the file system so that you could tweak uh, different uh, software on it and make things happen the way you want it. You're not doing this with any Amazon Fire TV stick that you see. So all those videos out there that say jailbreak, they're full of it. So we're going to sideload all the apps we need. Now, the apps that we have are not the latest, latest versions like the Xfinity uh, version is 3.2.1.028. Right now, they're up to 3.11, uh, something like that. Uh, it's a it's a larger number, but it's basically the same app as you would get if you had it on your tablet. We also have to install Chrome on here, the Chrome browser, because the browser that they have uh, doesn't allow you to sign into your Xfinity account. But Chrome does because you can install multiple browsers on your Android devices and the one that works is Chrome. We also need uh, an app called uh, ES File Explorer. And what's good about that is it's a file management system app uh, that opens up all different types of cloud apps, network apps, so that you can open up multiple places where you may have all these APKs and move it on into your Fire Stick. Also, we need an app called Mouse Toggle. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to use the mouse, uh, use the Amazon Fire TV uh, remote, the Alexa remote, and you double tap the pause play, and all of a sudden a circle cursor will show up on your screen so that you can use the D-pad and move around uh, the circle like a mouse. Uh, it's a little rigid. Uh, I don't... I have it. I'm going to show you how to use it, but I prefer to use this keyboard here. This keyboard here is a touch keyboard. It's Bluetooth. Uh, it is from a company called Jelly Comb. Uh, it's a great small size, fits great in your hand. It's got the touch screen surface. Uh, you pair it with Bluetooth by turning it on and pressing the pairing button when you're in pairing in settings on the Amazon Fire TV stick. And you can type in uh, everything. It's got function keys where the pause, play, and all that work. Uh, these buttons here are, are just click buttons. And here you hit in the, the escape in the corner and that's your go back button on Android, okay? So this is a nice little combination, uh, nice keyboard. Uh, you charge it using a USB, uh, a micro USB. Uh, that you might already be using to charge up your Android phones or tablets. So you keep this thing charged. It has an 11-hour battery or so. Uh, you can also use it on Windows, Android, and iOS. Uh, it has a lot of great features. Uh, you might want to pause it and take a look. Uh, but I'll definitely leave the link in the description. And I'll also leave all the links for all the apps that we're going to be using today. I'll give you an easy way to uh, get to them. Uh, this is the USB that it comes with, uh, and 
I love this little remote. It has auto shut off. You don't have to forget to uh, turn it on and off. It'll automatically power down and go in standby. So we're going to show you how to do all this right now. Okay, we start out here on the home screen, and this is the new layout uh, for the newest version. Uh, we have it uh, across the top here. We have search, we have home, we have your videos if you're an Amazon Prime video member or movies, TV shows, and then you have your apps that you can install or that you already have installed, and then you have settings. It's got notifications, network for your Wi-Fi, display and sound, applications, uh, controllers and Bluetooth devices. This is where you would hook up that Bluetooth keyboard. Uh, this is Alexa. You have preferences and you have your device settings and you have accessibility help and your account. To go back home, you hit the home button on your remote and you'll go right back in home. Now, if you press and hold the home button, uh, they'll give you four options here. They'll give you the time. You have your apps that you can jump right to, uh, all your apps that you have. Uh, you have a sleep mode where you can go into sleep mode uh, or put you know your your device into sleep mode and then you have mirroring here now if you have the latest and greatest Android operating system on your mobile devices you can actually mirror your devices right to your fire stick and that's a benefit um, but you can't do it with the Xfinity app because it blocks it and then you have settings here so what we need to do is to go into settings first and we have to go into to device and we have to go into developer option and we're going to turn this on adb bugging and uh, apps from unknown sources meaning you're going to install apps from outside of the app, official app store that's all it's telling you this is not jailbreaking people say that this is jailbreaking it's not okay i want to get that clear in case you're watching those other videos and they make you think you did that but you didn't um, so you can also reset to factory uh, defaults if you need to in the future. So now we can go back into our home screen here and we go into search and we can search this app that we're going to get legitly through the uh, app store. So it's ES File Explorer. Okay, so we'll go down here and here it is ES File Explorer. We're going to click that and we're going to uh, download that. We already had it downloaded, and it's just telling us to download it from the cloud. And it's gonna go and download, and that is that, okay? So here it is. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up the app once it's installed. And ahead of time, I took, uh, I'm gonna give you the links in the description, but I took all the three apps that we need to get this thing done. The Xfinity app, the uh, mouse app, uh, that makes your Alexa remote into a, a mouse and also Chrome because we need Chrome to sign in. All right, so uh, we have that. And once we get File Explorer to open, we'll open it up here and we'll click OK and we open up the app for the first time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and uh, you could see that there's a great app here. It's got settings. All right, it's got favorites, it's got local uh, library network, so you can find all your network storage, and it's got tools and all that stuff. And it also has uh, all different features that you can use. So let's go into network here, okay? And we go into cloud, and that's like Dropbox and all that, uh, all those other apps. So Box, SugarSync, Dropbox, you know, all, all of these drives that you can install. So I have Box and I have the apps that we need on there. I already downloaded from the links that I'm going to give you. So let me sign into here now. I am going to uh, use my keyboard to do so. Okay, so now I authorize and grant access to my Box account through ES File Explorer. So here is the uh, account right here. And these are the three apps that we're going to install. So the first one I want to install is I want to do the Fire Toggle. So this will allow us to get a toggle and have a mouse on our um, Fire TV Alexa remote. And install. And because we have unknown developers, we can open up the app here and it will allow us to uh, use this app. So now if I double click my uh, pause play button, 
I'll always get a mouse and I can move the mouse along. You see it here? And we're moving it along using the Alexa remote. That's what this tweak is for. Okay, so let's now um, escape back to ES File Explorer. And the next app we're going to install is the Chrome browser. So we'll click on this and we'll install our Chrome browser. So we go ahead and click install on the Chrome browser and it will install. And we need this Chrome browser because we can't sign into Xfinity without having the Chrome browser running, not just the general stock Android um, browser. So now we have the Android browser um, and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute, but we're just gonna go back and we're gonna now uh, scroll up to the Xfinity app. And we're gonna click that and we're gonna install the Xfinity app. Now there's one more thing I wanna show you. Uh, you don't get a app uh, on your main home screen and I'm gonna show you how to get that uh, because that's a problem that needs to be solved as well. So now I'll install the Xfinity app and of course you're gonna need credentials, uh, your username and password to sign into your Xfinity app. Um, and we're going to be able to watch TV, live TV, and all that stuff uh, if you're in your home network. So I'm going to open the app for the first time. And what's going to happen is you're going to see Chrome open up uh, in a second. It now opens up Chrome. Uh, without Chrome installed, you'll get uh, the other uh, one and you won't be able to use it. So we'll double tap and we'll scroll over and click on Accept. And now we can move our mouse up here like this. Now, if you didn't have that Bluetooth trackpad, you could still do this with this remote here. So we're gonna click it and we can type in now with our keyboard, uh, our username and password. So I'm gonna put that in right now. So now we sign in and we add our device, just like you would if you were using a tablet. And now we don't need a touch screen. Uh, device we can use our Bluetooth remote with touchpad so we'll just leave it as unnamed device and we can use our mouse here on our trackpad and we're gonna hit enter and we accept okay so now we have the Xfinity app all set up here okay so we're in our home screen and we can scroll up and down using the d-pad on here and we can scroll across with our mouse and we can click view all and all that stuff now if you go into the main menu here and you want to scroll up and down you can you can't use the up and down uh, on here so you have to kind of touch it and move it watch double tap okay. double tap somewhere where there's not words and you can scroll see And you tap and scroll, tap and scroll, tap and scroll, double tap and scroll, tap won't work, but double tap and scroll works. Okay, we can go to movies here and we can go and double tap and move it up. And say you want to watch a TV show uh, or a movie, you just click it and it'll open up, it'll say available in home network only that's if you're outside of your home like i am i'm using somebody's credentials to make the video i don't actually have xfinity uh, but i tested it out in their uh, home and it works great so let's go to on demand stuff so i'm going to go back and i'm going to set the filter to on demand because you can watch on demand outside uh, tv go stuff on outside of the house that filter there and we'll Go across and now we're on TV go for movies so it's gonna populate it and say I wanted to watch this movie right here I would hit here and hit watch and then all of your um, your functions work you can fast forward and rewind and do all that stuff 
So we're basically playing the movie right here. I have my audio hooked up to an external speaker, so you're not going to hear any audio. But uh, you do hear audio. Okay, so you return home to your uh, home screen, and you don't see your Xfinity app as your recent uh, app that you've used. And you don't see it in your app uh, here. So what do you do? You have to hit the home button, and you go over to settings. And if you go to settings, and you scroll over to applications, and you open it, and you go to manage installed applications, you're going to see that you have your Xfinity app. And you can actually launch it from here. But that's a pain in the butt if you're going to have to do that every single time. So in order to get it onto the home screen, I'm going to show you how to do that. So go back one step and go up to the App Store. This is the Amazon App Store. And if you click on Amazon App Store and you clear data and clear data. And let's do it a second time just to be 100% sure that we did it. And then we clear the cache. So what's happening now is that uh, all the reference to the apps that you have in your apps uh, is now disappeared. So if I hit the home button, you're going to see that some of the apps are starting to disappear and then they're going to reappear. Um, it's a weird little phenomenon to see everything disappear like this. Uh, it's just re-evaluating uh, what's on. Uh, and then sooner or later, oh, there it is. You'll see the Xfinity app. Oh, it, it went and it came. So I'm going to hit... Um, I'm going to uh, go across and I, and there's the Xfinity app. But if it didn't show up, I would hit uh, see all and I would go into my app draw, say for instance, and there goes the Xfinity app. I can hit the menu button and I can move to the front and that will go right to the front. And when I hit the home button, I'll see it there as one of my front apps here. So basically you're tricking the Amazon store to reevaluate what apps you have installed and it will show up now and an easy shortcut on your home screen. So this is pretty much how you use the Xfinity app on a Amazon Fire TV stick. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Make sure you subscribe because I got a lot of videos like this. Uh, I can help you out with a lot of things. I know all the tricks. So that's how we side loaded the Chrome browser, the mouse toggle, and the Xfinity app, all not meant to go on to your Amazon Fire TV stick but we made it possible and you can use the latest and greatest. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.